next up, we have Octavio from Fastnet. And Octavio will tell us about log analysis and Elasticsearch. Okay, um, in the meantime, uh, I will introduce myself. Um, and first of all, thank you very much, for Paolo, and uh, all the organization for, for allowing me to, to share this, uh, this presentation uh, with you today. The, um, the title of the presentation is uh, Log Analysis. Um, when CLI gets complex, um, well, um, it's, uh, it's really based on a project that uh, we worked uh, before, and uh, we actually used it as a tool for our day-to-day operations. Um, logs, uh, for, for example, I'm uh, Octavio, I'm a lender from Fastnet SPA. Uh, I'm a network admin. Uh, for a network admin, uh, we take care of uh, the network is up and running without any problems. And, and may, the main tools we have uh, to, to make sure of this is the uh, network monitoring system, of course, and also the logs, the logs that are generated by, uh, by, by many, many devices. Um, so log analysis is actually going through all these messages and uh, try to find out root causes of uh, network outages or problems or going like a degra degradation of, uh, of services and things like that. So um, as a network admin, um, a network admin is usually also a system admin admin, uh, system administration, sorry, uh, us usually like a Unix or Linux type. So we kind of... Uh, get used to use tools like, uh, like a VI or grep or less, more, awk. All these kind of tools are great, are great. And most of the time they do the job of going through the log analysis. But uh, by time, it, by this time, as the time goes on, there are um, many, many systems. Uh, uh, the number of the system are increasing constantly. And these systems are generating large amounts of data and this data comes in with uh, different formats. With, uh, but using these type of tools, it gets really, really complex. That's why the, the title of the, of the uh, presentation. Um, as a little bit of introduction, um, I work uh, from 2003 to Fastnet SPA, which is uh, uh, an ISP for the market region. The company started in uh, 1995 uh, with analog modem access, so you can imagine, and it was called Fastnet. So uh, and now we arrived to, uh, to uplinks to mix and amass of 10 gigabits, and we do all kinds of service, like from cloud and uh, all kinds of access, access technologies and everything. Sorry, it went back. Okay, thank you. Okay, what it means for, for a network admin doing log analysis? It's basically a challenging task. I just hear, okay, sorry. It's basically a challenging task because it requires the analysis of great, great amount of data in, the, in short periods of time. And usually you're in the under pressure because you have a network outage and also you have, a, you have management behind you that is, oh, come on, quickly uh, fix it. And so it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a daunting task. That's why I like pretty much this cartoon because uh, pretty much I feel like, uh, like Dilbert here because Dilbert gets, uh, gets uh, asked, uh, the network is down, I lose my work. And he usually says, okay, uh, the server is down, like uh, when Windows go blue screen, but uh, the management doesn't buy that anymore. So they, can, they start asking stuff and getting more pressure on it. Ah, oh, sorry, it's the other one. Okay. To overcome this issue, we um, end up uh, using, uh, we found out this open source project that was called Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch was like a, uh, like a great solution that uh, we, we encountered. And we started using it. We started using it because of, of, um, for a customer, but we also started using it for ourselves. They propose this kind of uh, stack which is, uh, which is not really like a network stack. We have all the protocols. It's more like a different components uh, mixed up together. Uh, all the components talk to, between each other. 
Uh, these components is like a software packages that can be installed either on one server, two servers, or one component on each server, and they talk to each other in a certain way, which I'm gonna go through briefly because we don't have, we don't have much time. It will take quite a bit. Alternative solution to this, uh, there are many commercial solutions like, like Splunk, for example, that are great. But in our case, uh, Elasticsearch was much more flexible, so it helped us quite a bit more. To do this, uh, all these tasks, it's, they're quite uh, complex also because it, it takes, there's a number of activities we have to go on. You have to make sure every step is done correctly and, and reliable. So um, the, the log analysis process is kind of helpful here in order to, to make sure that we, we cover all the parts together. So um, if we follow the log analysis process, we start generating the logs and then collecting them. It's like a flow. The, the, the logs starts, start from the origin, it goes to a storage, and then to the visualization. So it's, it's following basically this kind of process. We generate the logs, we aggregate them, and we give a meaning to those logs. We store them, and then once stored, we optimize them because we want to make access to them fast. And then we analyze them for, um, for the information that we actually need. And once we analyze it, uh, we need uh, some kind of automation that alerts us in case of something goes wrong. Sorry, can we get silence, please? If you have to chat, you can go outside. Thanks very much. If I go too fast, please let me know. Um, the generation of the logs usually is done by the network uh, devices like routers or switches. Uh, usually are configured just to send, uh, send the logs uh, to, to a device. Um, also, log data can be, can be taken out, out of the servers, either with a syslog, uh, syslog uh, uh, software, or using uh, one of the packages that comes with Elasticsearch, which are called the bits. We have different types of those ones. We can use uh, one called FileBit, uh, which takes care of uh, sending all the files correctly uh, to, the, to the server. But um, one of the things it uh, also does is like it takes uh, account all the, all, the, um, all the logs are sent uh, reliable because uh, if the machine goes down or reboots, it takes from the last, last, last spot and they start sending the logs from, that, from, the, from the world stop. Also for, lo for, this, for older servers, uh, where we cannot install this package, we use that technique, uh, which is uh, using a package called SSH mount, so we can actually map a folder from those server into our server so we can actually see the logs of that server directly, like a mapped drive or something like that. This is a, a pretty, pretty simple uh, configuration of the, uh, of the file bit package. We have, a, we have an input and we have an output. The input basically we tell, we tell the system where the logs are, the folder and the, the name of the files. And on the output, uh, we specify the server where we want to send it. We can specify more than one server so we can have redundancy or where the, the, file log, the log file is being sent. And because it's a TCP connection, it takes uh, account of, of all the acknowledges. So it's uh, pretty good. Another, another um, good uh, feature is that we already have predefined uh, log files, log formats, like uh, NGIX, Apache, and MySQL that can be sent directly to, to the database without going through the processing or another processing. Then we get to the aggregation and normalization of the information. This is, uh, this is maybe where we can spend most of the time because um, there is we, where we actually work on the log files. We can, we can actually go there and extract information, add information to the logs to make it something that we actually is helpful to us. Uh, for this, uh, there is another package called Logstash. Um, Logstash is basically a pipeline. So everything that comes in one side goes out on the other side. So we can configure a file or configuration file that starts from the top, goes to the bottom, and it goes out. So that's basically the logic, uh, which is uh, once we get to it, um, it, it gives you a better idea. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, readable. But uh, there are three main sections on the logstash, fi logstash file. Uh, there's an input section um, where we can put actually a syslog server. The, the Logstash can actually 
work as a syslog server on a specific port, then we uh, add a tag to it. So all the information that arrives to that port, it gets tagged with this information that we define, then goes to the next step, which is a filter. In a filter, we take that tag and we actually do some uh, regular expression uh, um, work on it, which is also sequential. We can have many, many, as many as we want uh, of uh, regular expressions. And whenever it finds a match, it goes out and takes out all the fields that we need. For doing this, it uses a language called, called Grok language that I will show you after this. And then once you do the, all the filtering, you go to the output also using this tag and sending to the Elasticsearch server, which is our storage of the information. And here also, we specify the host of the server, and we also specify the name of the, of the, of the index or the where they want to store that, uh, that information. As I said, the, the Grok language is the one used by the, by the system. It's more like a regular expression where we can have an expression and we can have the real data. And there's a nice tool uh, on the internet, which is the link there, that we can actually go there and test our rules. We put on the rules, put on the real information that we want to test on, and we see all the data was taken out of that uh, rule. So we're actually extract, extracting all the fields uh, from that uh, log information. Another, uh, another good package that we found very useful is uh, the syslog, uh, as you know, is, are not reliable because syslog uses UDP. Which, uh, which there is no actually guarantee that the logs generated arrive to the server. So something that uh, was added to the system is uh, using um, hashing techniques. Um, the way it works is basically we configure all devices sending uh, the same uh, syslog message to many destinations. That way the, the network device sends out, uh, sends out all these messages, arrive to different log servers, get uh, this procedure of hashing applied and comes up with a document ID, which is like a fingerprint of that uh, particular syslog message. Once the log stash adds that, it attacks that to the document ID, which is uh, how the uh, Elasticsearch server identified that particular, particular information. That way, um, the Elasticsearch server receives many copies of the same message uh, and uh, discards automatically all the duplicate ones. So we make sure that we only have the single one uh, message. This part is, is very useful. Uh, of course, it's not 100% reliable, but it gives you a much better reliability of the system because also takes care of the reliability of the log stash server itself and all the different passages in the middle. Now getting to the storage part, uh, we need a place to, so we can put in the information actually. And this is where Elasticsearch package comes in. Elasticsearch is a search engine and, uh, and analysis, and it's distributed, which is very, very important. Uh, so we can have this package installed on many, many machines, and all, all of them make a, a whole system. Um, it's an open source project, which is based on a Apache Lucene project and it takes care, all the updates are, are taken from them. Um, and the engine stores and indexes data. That's basically what it does. It stores and indexes the data. This is a big picture of the, of the, entire, of the entire system. We have on the left, uh, the, all the uh, originating uh, devices, which can be uh, the bits of software installed on servers. It can be net network devices generating, so generating logs or can be the syslog server directly, or any other device that generates logs. It gets to the log stash, where it can be received in any in many means, like TCP, UDP, HTTP, and data can be added to it, or uh, can be enriched too. We can get actual IP, add the geolocalization, we can add the DNS lookup, and we can put that as a field in the data. And then we can export it to the uh, Elasticsearch uh, servers, which is a cluster, as I said before. Uh, here, uh, it doesn't show, show much, but uh, the clusters, there are different roles on the, on the nodes. For example, the nodes are um, different types. Uh, once the cluster starts uh, small, 
we can start with uh, one or two servers, usually two for redundancy, but once the data starts growing, we start uh, needing more capacity, more uh, usually storage capacity or uh, processing capacity for the indexing. So um, we, uh, we can have a master node, which is a master node, it takes care of all the uh, coordination of all the nodes and, and doesn't store the data. We can have ingest nodes. We, the ingest nodes, what it takes care, it's, uh, it's uh, like eating all the data, it just takes in the data, but it doesn't store them. It sends to the other nodes. And we can have two types of data nodes. We can be um, hot or, or warm. Basically, this is what's a uh, new development because um, the hot nodes are usually uh, nodes with SSD drives very fast. So you can have all the, all the uh, commonly read information there and, uh, and, and can be processed very quickly. And then you can have all the historical data on the, on the warm nodes, obviously per, with a large storage disk slower. Uh, here are main, the main differences. Uh, if you think of Elasticsearch as a database, there are some, some, some differences uh, with uh, comparing, let's say, MySQL. One of the, uh, one of the things are the names, but uh, the names are, are a little relevant. For example, a database is called an index, a table, a type, a, flow, uh, a row, a document, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the main part is that on MySQL, you have index. You can index a field or some fields. But uh, on Elasticsearch, everything is automatically indexed, everything. And um, some other um, differences is that uh, on MySQL, you use, you use the yes SQL language, like it's doing select updates. On the Elastic, you use uh, HTTP methods. So there's, everything is API. So you can interrogate the system with HTTP, put, uh, get information from there, and then gets us to another issue, to the issue of security. Uh, then uh, the, the, the system is uh, pretty much open. So uh, with HTTP, we can go there, throw in data, get out data. We can delete data. So this is not that good. Um, the Elasticsearch, uh, um, they developed uh, some uh, security model, which is an add-on commercial. And obviously, there, this is the point where you get to pay to the license. Um, but uh, what we did is for a small group uh, of administration, uh, network administration, we use a workaround, which is suggested, uh, with, that use an isolated VLAN, so we can put all the, um, all the elastic search uh, servers that talk to each other, so pretty much they don't talk to anybody, just them, and are not exposed to any risk, and then uh, uh, use firewall to, um, to publish the port only to the sources of the, of the log stats that we want to receive data from. It's pretty much a pretty simple, pretty simple situation, but it's a way just to, uh, to protect our system that is basically used for, by, by, by our own. And uh, also, the last component that we haven't talked about is Kibana, which is the, uh, the front end, what we, what we see, where we look for the information. And there, we can use um, NGIX a server, a web server as authentication proxy, so we can actually proxy the authentication request there and send it to Kibana without exposing the port. So it's just some uh, hacks, uh, really, just to, to get around some of the uh, security uh, limitations of the system, which are OK, but uh, obviously it doesn't scale. Uh, this is good just for our group, just for our usage. But once uh, the marketing group or the, uh, uh, the management start asking for this kind of information, it gets uh, really complicated, so it's not, it's not really the case. What happens when the data grows too much? So we have uh, the disk capacity on our server. We need to uh, make sure that we don't fill the disks. Uh, we have um, another uh, component, which is called Curator, just for the name of the Curator is just uh, another process that runs on the server. And uh, using cron jobs, we can uh, schedule activities, uh, like uh, maintenance activities. And we go there and create this kind of configuration. We can say every single type of document, document we have there of index. We can say how many days we want to keep them on the server. Uh, we, we can keep them active or we can keep the, keep the document uh, non-active. A lot of difference is that uh, once we keep it active, 
the system starts indexing the, the, the information all the time, so it takes resources. When we put it uh, on hold, we basically we leave the information there, but it's not available for searching. Um, and then we can also delete it also all there uh, to save space, basically. And this is all done automatically. Once we go to the last part, which is the analysis where, where we actually, we did all this uh, work just to get here, which is just the tip of an iceberg because all the work, the main work is done uh, behind the curtains. And this is uh, the last part. Um, this is basically the, um, uh, the interface uh, that uh, we, we have available. Um, basically, it's, a, it's a one line of command that we can actually search pretty much everything. It's like having Google for your data. So it's, uh, it's pretty unique and very, uh, very useful because uh, we can actually uh, go there and write anything we want and it will go and, and look for it and, and all the documents. And not only, it, it will show you like a time frame, uh, all these occurrences at what time, how many, how many occurrences have at every single date or every single time, sorry. Um, for example, in this example, we're looking for logs generated for a specific device with a, a specific port, port, port and with a, it goes down. So um, it shows up that uh, at a certain hour, the link went down like 300 times. So it's, it's pretty awkward. So this kind of give you an idea that we are dealing with, a, with an issue here of hardware or something like that. Uh, we, other things that we can do is uh, we can actually group uh, the information that we take. Uh, grouping the information is quite helpful just to make reports or try to, uh, to find information that uh, can help us go further on the analysis. Um, this is why Logstash, uh, Logstash work of getting all the fields is really useful because we can take those fields and make counts out of them and create reports. We can order them by relevance. And after that, we can take that information and create some graphs, which uh, graphs are, are usually uh, good uh, just to give you an overview of what's going on. Um, we can have different graphs, uh, like different levels, like we can take, uh, let's say, uh, IP traffic, and we can separate uh, uh, either if it's TCP, UDP, and within those, we can know how much, uh, how many, which ports they use, uh, et cetera. So we can have the IP address, so we can have different levels of, uh, of graphings. This is another usage that uh, it's really unique because, because it gave us uh, some, uh, some advantage uh, uh, like managing the network. Um, this is uh, the cases of an uh, email <coughs> server. Uh, we have a couple of email servers that keep sending emails. Uh, we uh, kind of uh, graph uh, the email sent by second, by the second, by the minute. So we can uh, actually, if uh, there is uh, some issues about spamming or issues about someone overusing the, the, uh, the sending of the email, we can actually go there and quickly have a look and, and see who was the, the, the source of this uh, kind of traffic, which is, uh, which is not a kind of automatic solution, but it gives you the advantage of having uh, to act quickly on the, on the issues. About alerting, alerting is a commercial, uh, a commercial module, but um, alternatives there are, because uh, the fact it's an open source project, it has APIs, it's also open to uh, develop your own modules. Basically, there are some good, uh, there's a couple of good projects out there, but it will take like another session just to talk about them. And finally, what's next? The software uh, goes, um, it's been, develop constantly. There are many, many new features all the time. Uh, some uh, new one that I really like it, I want to experiment uh, very quickly. It was, released, uh, early, uh, it was released a few weeks ago. It's the NetFlow module, which uh, you can actually get uh, NetFlow imports uh, from, the, uh, from, your, from your routers. And then you can actually do all this uh, analysis on them instead of the log files, which is a, it's a, good, a good addition uh, to the analysis. And also another one that you use, we use is a Logstash jQuery for importing SQL data. Uh, this is uh, really helpful for many, mainly for uh, uh, management purposes, but because uh, you can actually go there and extract information about your, 
uh, management uh, ISP systems and actually put, the, put it on, a, on, on Elastic and be able to query them and do actually do reports on, on those information. And another being talked about quite lately is the artificial intelligence, which is another feature which is kind of a, a big word. But uh, in reality, what it is, is, uh, is a set of thresholds. You actually define some thresholds which say, from this on, it's not right. From this on, you should go army. Uh, and so the system can uh, learn all these features. And with some logic, it can actually do the analysis for you. So we actually go analyze the, uh, the behavior of the data and, uh, and actually do actually some, um, some notifications on it. But unfortunately, I still is a commercial add-on, so I haven't uh, really, I have seen a presentation, but haven't really used them. Well, that's about it uh, for, for me. Uh, hopefully, you find this, uh, this software useful and you, you can try them. It's all open source, so you can actually free to, to use it. And then, uh, and for us, it's really a, a software that uh, is a nice tool to have on your, on, on your, uh, on your belt. Just like that. Thanks very much, Octavio. Any questions? Any questions for Octavio? No questions, but uh, actually I have two questions. Sure. So, um, so uh, one is, uh, uh, let's say, did you um, ever consider or try any alternatives uh, to Elasticsearch, or why did you use Elasticsearch? Um, well, the alternatives that we really ha found were all commercial, like the Splunk. The Splunk is the one uh, that is being publicized, uh, it mostly used, is the leader, let's say. And, um, but uh, it really, we couldn't really find what we were looking there. And um, some other open source solutions, we really didn't. Uh, this solution came because uh, one customer, I really was experimenting it and asked us for help. We, we just cannot find this software, but it looks neat, but we don't know how to use it. But uh, it starts, uh, we kind of uh, went, to, went on it and uh, found it really, really useful, and uh, we, as soon as we see it, we, we liked it very much, and we started developing. That's, that's how, but I know there are some, uh, some other, another software, but uh, would be like, I think Kafka, or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the Kafka is- But I think for, uh, Kafka yeah. has a plugin that can also integrate. Uh, yeah, uh, Kafka is uh, to passing messages, but uh, I don't know, you would have, uh, uh, MongoDB or in any case any other document oriented open source software so that's yeah, why I was yeah. wondering and then the second question I had is uh, so when you were addressing the topic of scalability you were saying about like uh, making sure that we don't finish the disk right yeah um, I was wondering whether you had any issue like with horizontal scalability so having to add more uh, Resor more resources because they are not sufficient for one Elasticsearch node. And if you had that problem, how Elasticsearch was uh, reacting? Because when I, I was trying Elasticsearch myself, I saw that uh, everything is great as long as it works. And then it's kind of a black box that uh, it's hard to manage, right? So you don't really have visibility in, uh, you know, you have maybe even to wait for it to crash to say, ha, oh, I need more resources and then you add more nodes. So I was wondering if you had any issues like that or not. Okay, yeah, the, uh, well, there are many approaches to, to, to this issue. Performance by itself of the system, because there are many components can be can be very can be interesting just to look at it because uh, there are many places to look at. Um, the first thing to look at for sure is the the your hardware resources that you make sure you don't uh, end up without RAM, uh, make sure you don't end up uh, without disk, and also another uh, with the RAM for example, there's a you need to disable the swapping of the uh, you have to have machines with a lot of RAM because you want to do all the indexing on the real RAM, not the swapping one. So that's, that's a big improvement, just just very simple one. And um, adding new servers, um, you can notice that the system is going uh, busy because it's kind of, uh, it starts uh, taking too long just to respond. And then you can see the process of the Elastic taking a lot of RAM, taking a lot of CPU. Um, 
And then uh, we can actually offload a little bit of information uh, using an adding servers or adding different types of servers, like uh, taking out the master node, making a single master node that take care of all the, the, all the maintenance activities within the cluster. That increases a lot, adding SSD disk. But um, the software has gone, is actually, it's being developed uh, quite, quite quickly and it's going from version two to version five now. So it's, it's getting to version six uh, now, so it's changing a lot. Crashes, we, we don't, haven't seen any, any, any crashes, which it means like it's getting some uh, maturity, the, the software itself. Uh, one, one way we approach the, the, the fact that the, um, the, it got slow it was by um, putting many of the indexes, the old indexes, because we have some servers that are sending like every day, like sending like two gigs, uh, three gigs of information, and information that was not being queried. So we take that information. If we cannot delete it, we, we just put it uh, on hold. We, we close those indexes so the system doesn't put that in memory. So that way it's more efficient if we cannot add uh, more resources, obviously. But the, the good thing is it's scalable because you can add, add, add resources to it, and it's pretty nice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So next up.